NASA is going to save the world by stealing heat from Yellowstone Super Volcano. Ladies and gentlemen, this just in. How the heck are you, Rex Bear Leak Project? Let me read to you a couple headlines. NASA's ambitious plan to save Earth from a super volcano. BBCnews.com. That's by David Cox on Apocalypse Week. And then, NASA to stop a doomsday volcano by stealing its heat. Avery Thompson, Popular Mechanics. Dot com. Now, let me read you a quick excerpt from Popular Mechanics. NASA's plan is to drill a hole into the side of the volcano and pump water through it. When the water comes back out, it'll be heated to over 600 degrees, slowly cooling the volcano. Now, the team hopes that given enough time, this process will take enough heat from the volcano to prevent it from ever erupting. As a bonus, ladies and gentlemen, as a additional bonus for your pleasure, the scientists are proposing to use the heated water as a source of geothermal energy, potentially powering the entire Yellowstone region with heat from the volcano that wants to destroy it. Now, this geothermal generator can produce energy at about 10 cents per kilowatt, competitive with other energy sources. Now, why stop there? First of all, I find it very interesting that about a month ago, I did a podcast, it was about maybe a month, month and a half, specifically on Yellowstone. It might have even been a little bit longer. I do so many podcasts. But approximately one to two months ago, and you can go back and, and listen to this for yourselves, and I'm sure many of you remember this, I did a podcast on Yellowstone and actually why not take the energy from all the heat and help offset an eruption and actually use that energy to power industries, residential, etc. And now it's all over the media. So this just goes to show you what the alternative media, what somebody in his garage can do, or somebody like you listening to this show. Maybe somebody NASA heard it. Maybe they were already thinking about it. And because somebody brought it up, got enough attention, then some of the larger media outlets start to discuss it. This is fascinating news. This is absolutely incredible. Now, let me read to you also an excerpt from BBC.com, NASA's ambitious plan to save Earth from a supervolcano. This is Brian Wilcox. I was a member of the NASA Advisory Council on Planetary Defense, which studied ways for NASA to defend the planet from asteroids and comets. Brian Wilcox is from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory at the California Institute of Technology. He says, I came to the conclusion during that study that the supervolcano threat is substantially greater than the asteroid or comet threat. Did I not say, take that energy, and that would make virtually all other energy sources right now that are being used to power houses, you know, like nuclear energy. Let's put a plutonium reactor in something with a 40-year shelf life and steam water to produce energy. We know there's more, <laughs> there's more scenarios. They're not, <laughs> they're not building nuclear reactors on fault lines to power homes. I mean, that's, that's a byproduct. This is military tech. All that spent fuel that's sitting in plastic containers sometimes with cat litter over it, you know, that's for future applications. There's a reason they don't, I don't want to use the term decommission, that's the wrong term. There's a specific method where this radioactive waste can be transformed to not be radioactive anymore, not harmful. They don't want that. This is like reserves for the depart these you know, defense industries and contractors to go dip in to build weapons of mass destruction. When you read about the billions and billions and billions of dollars of cleanup costs from nuclear reactors that go into meltdown, you start to question the status quo of the nuclear reactors being there just to power people's refrigerators, basically. Now, if you put any credit into some of these incredible remote viewers like Dick Algeyer, Daz Smith, 
I like both those guys. I've interviewed them both. They remote viewed Atlantis under controlled remote viewing applications. And the destruction of Atlantis was drilling into the Earth for energy. Were they doing it to offset a volcano, or were they doing it to be gluttonous power mongers? I don't know. So certainly, if they're going to drill a huge hole <laughs> into the you know magma chambers out there by the Yellowstone supervolcano and pull out its heat, then they could build entire infrastructures based on that specific area. How cool would that be? Transforming a ticking time bomb that could wipe out the entire planet into something that could power the planet without having to build additional nuclear reactors and pull petroleum from the ground, you know, the, the blood of the planet. Makes sense to me. I think it's brilliant. A couple days away from the solar eclipse, the 33rd degree total solar eclipse that divides the country in half. I'm going to do my best to share that with you guys live if I can get an internet connection. I've got a special filter that I can uh, put the camera behind to record this without any issues. Also, remember, tomorrow, actually today, is Bless the Water Day. So go outside, put your feet in some water in a lake or in the tub, go to the ocean, go do something nice pour a glass of water, put good energy into this. It's going to be good energy day, the day before the total solar eclipse. You know, go out into your backyard with no shoes on, if, you know, no socks on. Give the tree a hug. As silly as that sounds, give the tree <laughs> a hug. Be a tree hugger for a minute, why not? Plant a tree. Plant a, a, a flower or some type of crop. Do something good for the environment. And also, I'm going to talk about this when I get back, when I have more time, maybe tomorrow as well. There is so much going on right now before this total solar eclipse as far as politically. Not only in the administration, but also with these riots and these uh, race baiters. these institutions that are anti-America, anti-old school values, anti-Christian, anti-white, anti-pro-life, um, anti-American, anti... Mm, normal in some aspects. I just read bits and pieces of a, uh, what's it called, ANFA, the ANFA institution that George Soros funds that is just, it, it, it's like a terrorist organization. I think that's what it's called, ANFA. Um, uh, was that place called Evergreen College? And, yeah, here we go. So there was a pamphlet that was discovered there. I think I spelled that wrong. There we go. It's been a long day. So this pamphlet was discovered there of Antifa. And these guys are straight up terrorists. And because they're funded by George Soros, and some of them are provocateurs, they can get away with it. Could you imagine what would happen if somebody that was Christian or somebody that uh, was, I don't know, like, hmm, how do I put this? Even I am attempting to be as politically correct as possible now just because of all these psychopaths out there that if you have an opinion 
uh, that that history shouldn't be changed and altered, then uh, then you're considered a racist. It's insanity. Well, read through this pamphlet that was discovered at Evergreen College that talks about what these Antifa thugs actually do. They attack free speech. They pull grandma with a U.S. flag around like she's a rag doll. They talk about how they want to bring people in from overseas that have drug problems, and, and, and they want to you know, give them as many drugs as they need to, to be happy. And if, if you are uh, you know, somebody that doesn't have a whole bunch of pigmentation in your skin, then you're a fascist. Yeah, if, if you weren't born with uh, you know, darker colored skin, then you're a fascist racist pig. And uh, they want it to be uh, a completely different country within 100 years. They want to completely destroy America within 100 years. And these guys are getting away with, yeah, I mean, just, just what they're getting away with terrorist acts. They're getting away with it. And it's okay for them. How does that work? You guys know I don't care uh, if you're gay or black or Hispanic or white or green or purple or yellow or orange or orangutanian or, or you know, giraffian or, or dolphinian or whatever. I don't care. It's who you are as a person. And look at what these psychopaths are doing. I'm telling you, just look at some of these. I'm not telling you. I'm asking you guys. Do some of the research into these pamphlets and what this anti-fa, anti Fa. Protesters and provocateurs and thugs are doing. It's disgusting. Watch the, the video where they're pulling, pulling grandma around because she's got an American flag and they're, they're surrounding her like a bunch of hyenas with rabies. What's up with the double standards? And then you've got people in politics that are trying to get Trump, President Trump, institutionalized. They want to they hire some doctors to do psychological tests on President Trump to see if he's fit for office. <laughs> I mean, they're thinking of anything they can to get him out of there. Welcome to the new New World Order, where they love you so much that if you feel that you have the right to express yourself outside of organizations like Antifa, then you're a fascist pig, slime ball. How do you feel about that, ladies and gentlemen? Doesn't it feel good to know that you're the bad guy or bad gal because you might have differing opinions of George Soros. If you're pro-America and you're pro-fascist, according to these guys. If you're, uh, if you're married, you're fascist. If you're white, you're fascist. If you're a Christian, you're fascist. So what's up with, you know, the, the, the promotion of Black Lives Matter and, and the, the people that started Black Lives Matter? They're good. They're really good people. But, oh, somebody that, if you even talk about starting a White Lives Matter, Oh man, you're you're racist. You are absolutely a racist scumbag. How about like who cares what color your skin is matters? How about that? <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. Makes total sense. You were born white, so you're racist. And you didn't vote for Obama, so you're racist. And the earth is flat. And you need to go get another vaccine. And you need to make sure to drink more genetically modified E. coli feces. And you need to bow down to your masters. And you need to lick their boots. And you need to quit questioning what the news tells you. Because you're a conspiracy theorist. And it's not good for you. You need to be on more lithium. And you might need to take more antidepressants as well because they make you more depressed. Make sure that every six months you get your flu vaccine. And just because they put thimerosal and squalene and aluminum and aborted dead baby cells and sometimes 
drain monkey cells and you know sometimes insect DNA. That's all good for you. That's to prevent you from getting the flu. So just remember that. Welcome to the new, new world order where they love you so much. And I really hope you guys know I'm being sarcastic about this. You might want to do the research before. Uh, let's say you work in the medical industrial mafia complex and they say that you have to be vaccinated every six months or however often it is. Maybe you guys could get together and start a, hmm, I don't know, a lobby of some sort or maybe some type of get some good lawyers to back you up and show them what's actually in these things. Because too many people know about it now. If you uh, go ask somebody that, that really pushes these vaccines in, in certain political realms and medical realms, and then they call people that question what they're, what the ingredients, uh, crazy people, um, you know, the people that say they're doctors so they know what's better for your kids than you, and the people that question doctors, you know, parents, they should be locked up and their kids should be taken away. Um, Maybe when you see them being questioned by reporters or people that just want to ask them genuine questions and they freak out and they, they run away, like little, little kittens, you know, looking for their mommy. How do people not see this? How do people not get it, ladies and gentlemen? I'm just at a complete, it's a complete mind warp, is it not? There's more people out there that are influenced by false religions, fake people. I was listening to a sermon today for about 30 seconds and it's all I can handle. This guy was talking about the, the Holy Ghost and, and I firmly believe in the Holy Ghost, but the way this guy was pitching the Holy Ghost, it sounded like a sales pitch to me. It sounded like somebody was, was selling something. It didn't sound like it was from the heart. How many people out there at very high levels are pitching BS what they don't believe? And how many genuine people that truly believe in what they are discussing with others, what do they have? You know, they're grassroots, they're digging in, they're working hard. Found out one of my ancestors was the first Baptist preacher in a specific country. I'm not going to say which one because then you'll know who he is. The first, and this country was controlled by Catholics at the time. So he was bringing in a different religion, and you guys know I'm not Baptist. I'm not even Christian, but I don't care what your religion is as, lo as long as you're a good person. I've said this a million times. He was preaching on the streets because that's what he believed in. He, people were coming to him on the streets. So how cool is that? They weren't going into some giant coliseum that it takes an hour to get there. People are going in in their best clothes because they got to look good for, for, for Mary and John and, and Nancy and Jim and everybody else. You know, they got to keep up with those guys. And hey, if that's your thing, that's cool. But is that what Jesus would do anyway? And what's up with Jesus? Who is the real Jesus? That's what I want to know. Is it the Vatican version? Is it Yahshua? Is it Duzeman? Question everything, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening to me rant. Be excellent to each other and be the change you want to see.